Sabbath is a special, Sabbath is special because we come to worship. The fullness of the Godhead, the infinite merciful savior of sinners, the son of righteousness, the merciful high priest, the, the, <clears throat> the healer of all human maladies and diseases, our tender, compassionate friend, the constant, ever-present, and helpful companion, the prince of the house of David, the shield of his people, the prince of peace, the coming king, the everlasting father, the culmination and fruition of the desires and hopes of all the ages. What a blessed resume. God is everything we need. Let us bow our heads in reverence for prayer. <clears throat> our loving Heavenly Father, what a privilege to be able to worship you this Sabbath in your house of prayer. Thank you for being everything we need. Sweet rest and peace are your gifts of love to us each Sabbath. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Be with each one of us as we seek to obey your will. We love you and praise you, for you are worthy. Amen. Please remain standing for the hymn of worship. We praise thee, O God, for the son of thy love. For Jesus who died and has now gone above, hallelujah, thanks the glory, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, thanks the glory, revive us again. If you're like me, you can't wait till Sabbath comes. And when I'm not feeling so good, I say, if I can just get to church, I'll be all right. So, so seeing this with me this morning. Revive us again. The words will be on the screen.
As I stand here, I think I have the privilege of saying happy Sabbath to everyone here. Happy Sabbath to those of you who are online, who may be on the screen. It has been my assignment to welcome visitors. And very simply in Webster's Dictionary, the root word of visitor, the noun, is a, a visit is to go or come to see. Now, I would like to see, if you're not a member of DuPont Park Seventh-day Adventist Church, and you are a visitor with us today on this Sabbath, January 12th, would you do us a favor of standing so we can see who is visiting with us today? Not one, not one, not one. Oh, we're all family. Well, anyway, well, there may be some online who may be streaming for the first time. So I still will give the welcome. And it goes that if you are curious and have come to see or gone online to see what's happening, if you are weary and have come to rest, if you are grateful and have come to share, if you are hurting and have come for solace, if you have, are listening and have come to pray, if you are seeking and have come for answers, welcome, welcome, welcome on this Sabbath day. Be blessed. Yeah, she wants you to stand there and welcome one another. Come on, y'all, let's come together. She says she's a super senior, so <laughs> let's stand together as we welcome her. Well, what a fellowship, what a joy divine, leading on the everlasting arms. What a blessedness, what a peace of mind, I'm leading on the everlasting arms, and we are leading. 
you know that we're leaning safe and secure from all alarm said we're leaning yes you know that i'm leaning leaning on the ever one last time we're leaning said we're leaning yes you know that i'm leaning safe and secure from all alarm said i am leaning oh, you know that i'm leaning leaning on the everlast stay Somebody ought to put their hands together. Somebody ought to put their hands together and give God the praise he deserves. I don't hear nobody praising the Lord this morning. Put your hands together. Give God the praise he deserves. Amen. Amen. I'm sure glad the Lord done blessed us according to our praise. Huh? Oh, my God, my God, my God. He blesses us based on how he loves us. Good to see you this morning. Come on, Pastor. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be what everybody. Is there anybody in you who will help me magnify the name of the Lord in this place? Is there anybody who's glad to be in the house of God today? Come on. I'll... That was a weak praise. Come on, we ought to give God some praise in this place like we really mean him. Come on, put your hands together and give God some praise. If the Lord has been good to you this week, in the year 2019, would you just help me celebrate the name of the living God in this place? Amen. Good morning, DuPont Park. Happy Sabbath, DuPont Park. Are you glad to be in the house of God today? Amen. Amen. Good to see each and every one of you in the house of the Lord today. I want to welcome you one more time to our online guests, to each and every one of you. Welcome to our church, your church, your home. First announcement for today is a reminder for Power Up Tuesday. Power Up Tuesday is a time that we take time to pray and fast every hour on the hour. Last week we were praying for the government workers who were experiencing the effects of the shutdown. We want to ask you to continue to pray for that. In addition to that, would you pray for our president? How about that? Maybe if we pray for our president that the Lord will help... So let's just pray for our president in addition to praying for those who are affected by the shutdown that some, so we can get something done so we can move forward from this. Um, so just praying for, every, for those people every hour on the hour on Tuesdays. Wednesday Connect is back. We did have Wednesday Connect on this past week at 12 p.m. as well as 7 p.m. The lessons are in your bulletin as we're talking about a people revitalized coming from the book of Nehemiah. Your lessons are still, your study guides are in the bulletin. So just be mindful that we will be here at 12 p.m. as well as 7 p.m. I want to remind you as well about first fruits. Proverbs 3 verse 9 and 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions. And with the first fruits of your increase, so will your barns be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. This year, we want to honor the Lord with the first fruits of our increase, your offering. And this will include maybe your first hour of your income, your first day, your first week, your first month, whatever it is that the Lord puts on your heart to honor him within this first fruits. That day when which we turn in all that offering for our sacrifice of first fruits will be January the 26th, which is the last Sabbath in January. So we want to encourage you and remind everybody to just remember first fruits offering here on January the 26th. Um, I want you to look in our bulletin, um, the first insect, the first um, insect right here says, please remember the Brandon family in prayer. Pamela Hernandez, Pamela Hernandez Snipes, who was the daughter, who is the daughter of Lily Brandon, the cousin of Beverly Brandon Sims and Denise Cole passed away on Monday 
December the 31st. The funeral services will be on Tuesday, January 15th at the J.B. Jenkins Funeral Home at 7474 Landover Road in Hyattsville, Maryland. The visitations will begin at 930 and the funeral itself will start at 10. I want to encourage you to um, come and support the family, our church members, Sister Sims is here and um, Sister Cole is here. I want to keep that family in prayer as well as continue to just pray and pray and pray for them. At this time, I want to call upon those who celebrated a birthday this past week. If you celebrated a birthday on this past week, would you stand so that we can celebrate your life and what God has done for you? I see one, and I know I see one, two, three. Now, if you would do me a favor, for those that are comfortable, if you would tell me how the Lord, how many years the Lord has blessed you with. And I'm going to start to my left. 87 years old. Brother Terrell Daly, can we put our hands together for 87? Come on, DuPont, we can do better than that. Let's put our hands together for 87 years old. 73. 73. I heard 73. 87. 87. Can we just put our hands together and celebrate? Yes, ma'am. 11? 11 years old. Come on, we can celebrate 11 years old. Did I miss one more? I think I saw one more. I believe that's everybody. Well, on three, can we just celebrate those people who had a birthday by saying happy birthday? One, two, three. And we wish you and pray for many more birthdays to come. Lord bless you and keep you. If you're celebrating a wedding anniversary, oh, okay, Brother Eli stood up real quick. All right, if you celebrate a wedding anniversary on this past week, would you just stand so that we can say, Doc, look at this. Oh, they in love for real. He's taking pictures already. Okay. All right. Well, would you just let us know how many years? Two wonderful years. Two years? Okay, can we? Two. All right. Well, you know how we do at DuPont Park since you, you know, we're celebrating a wedding anniversary. Would you just show us how God has blessed you? Amen. Can we put our hands together for the Ely family for two wonderful, beautiful years? Uh, we praise God for you and we wish you many, many more. At this time, I'm going to, we're going to proceed as it is written in our bulletins, which will be Sister Sherry Davis Haddock, Haddock, Hackett. <clears throat> At this time, you may come up and bless us. Amen. Good morning. As she's coming, just one brief announcement. We were preparing to share the report of the nominating committee with you today. Uh, as of yesterday, we were still making sure that we had a couple of things finished and the report is being typed and edited for you to make sure it looks right and it will be ready on Monday for the committee to take its last look. We will then email the list to as many of you who are signed up or we have your email address. It will also then be presented in public on next Sabbath. We will have our first reading. We're going to try to get it in your hands before next Sabbath so that you have even more time to look at it. We will have the official first reading on next Sabbath, and the committee is scheduled to sit in session for an open session. This is customary and is a part of the process that if you have questions or concerns regarding the report, you are given an opportunity to come before the committee. The committee will sit in session on Sunday, which is the 20th of January, January the 20th, 2019, at 10 o'clock a.m. What time did I say? 10 o'clock a.m. or what day? Sunday, the 20th of January, all right? And then we will then proceed from there with our 
final reading and present it to you for your final vote. Thank you. Amen. It's time for the children's story. And you know, I'm never going to give up, congregation, because I want to remind you. I'm going to use a different approach this morning. Do you believe in Christian education? You truly believe that we are to educate God's children. Then you will invest in this school who's connected to this church. Go out the door, go down the steps, make a left. The school is right there. We don't have another campus on Alabama Avenue. The school needs you to support the school. I'll always give $20 every Sabbath, and I'm always looking. If I can find five people to match me, it'll be $100. It's for the school, so please give to the children. We might have more children for the children's story if we support DuPont School. Thank you.
right, we have a few more. Good morning. Good morning. So today I want to talk about the words, I'm sorry. When do you normally say, I'm sorry? Go ahead. Don't have to raise your hand. Just call out. When? So when you do something, you do something that you weren't supposed to do and, or you did something Okay, so you did something maybe accidentally or you did something that you weren't supposed to do. Why do we say I'm sorry? Why? So when somebody's hurt, you have to say I'm sorry. Let me ask you another question. Do you always mean it when you say I'm sorry? No, right? Sometimes we say I'm sorry just because we know that's what we're supposed to say, but not because we really mean it. Do you want me to share with you the secret to saying I'm sorry and really meaning it? Do you want to learn how to say I'm sorry the right way? Yeah? Okay, so then I want you to repeat after me. Are you ready? I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Okay, let's say it again. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Okay, so let me tell you how this works. The first thing you do when you say, I'm sorry, you are letting the other person know that you recognize that you hurt that person. Does that sound like a good idea? Right? So wouldn't you like if somebody were to hit you or push you on the playground, would you like for them to acknowledge the fact, to say, listen, I know that I did that. Wouldn't you like, do you, have you ever, somebody ever pushed you and then they, then you turned around and say, hey, you pushed me. And they say, no, I didn't. Has that ever happened to you? Has somebody done something to you? And then when you say, hey, you did this to me. And they say, no, I didn't. Is that person sorry? No. So the first thing, if you're really sorry, you have to let the person know. You know that you did something wrong. Okay? So that's I'm sorry. What's the next one? I'm sorry. I was wrong. That's right. So the next thing you have to do is you have to let the person know, not only I did that, but I know that what I did was wrong. I know that what I did was wrong. Now, this is why you need to do that. A lot of times you can say, I did that, but... You know, if you hadn't been in my way, I wouldn't have pushed you, right? So when you, even though you're saying, I did it, you're not taking responsibility for what you did. So I'm sorry says, I w you know, listen, I know I did something that wasn't right. I was wrong says, I admit that I was wrong. And then here's the last part. Here's the best part. Next part is what? Remember, I'm sorry. I was wrong. What's the next one? Please forgive me. So when you ask for another person's forgiveness, here's what you're doing. You're saying, we are all human. We all make mistakes. We all do things that are wrong. And so when I'm asking you to forgive me, and then you say, yes, I forgive you, what we're doing is we're acknowledging that we're all sinners. One of the most generous things you can do is to forgive another person. So when you ask a person for, you, for their forgiveness, what you're doing is you're giving them an opportunity to be generous. That's such a gift. So let's say it again. Let me hear you apologize. Let's do all three. I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. Okay, now let me tell you where else you can use this. Do you know every single day we do things that hurt Jesus? And when you go to bed, right before you go to bed tonight, if you think about all the things you did today that made Jesus sad, you can say this to Jesus. You can say, dear Jesus, I'm sorry. I was wrong. Please forgive me. 
And guess what Jesus is going to do? He's going to forgive you. Now, if Jesus forgives you, if somebody does something to you and they come to you and they say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me, what is your response? What should you do? That's right. You should say, I forgive you. Because when you do that, you are acting just like Jesus. All right? So I want you to do this today. I want you to think about somebody that you may have hurt. Maybe you made fun of a kid in school. Maybe you pushed somebody. Maybe you told your parents you were going to do something and you didn't do it. Maybe you woke up on the wrong side of the bed and you were mean to somebody in your household because you hadn't gotten breakfast yet. Whatever it is, I want you to think about something that you did today. And then that may have hurt somebody else. And then I want you to go to them and I want you to say what? I'm sorry, I was wrong, please forgive me. That's awesome. All right, and then when we do that, we are acting just like Jesus. Okay, let somebody come up and and let's say a word of prayer. Who wants to pray? Okay, come on up, please do that. Okay, you're going to go first, and then you're going to go second, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for my mommy and my daddy. Help us to not lie. And help us to be good and kind. And help us to love each other. And help us to forgive us when we do bad things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for always being with us, Lord. Thank you for letting us wake up, breathe, eat, and eat and drink, Lord. Thank you for putting clothes on our body every morning and every day, every night, every evening. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be the great person you know that we could be, Lord. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. And thank you for not letting us do the bad things, Lord. For everybody that did the wrong thing, especially if somebody did something that that hurted somebody, please forgive us, Lord, and always we love you. Amen. 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 Now go quietly back to your seats. I'll do it this way. Good morning, church. Happy Sabbath. I came across this story for tithes and offering. It's, it's jumping out of a tree into our father's hands. And it's, it's, a, it's about an African story that it relates to Malachi 3, verse number 10. And it's where God invites us to test him to prove to him, tell him, prove me. And it's a story about how African and African, not religion, but culture, they would take their youth, three years old, and they would climb up into a tree and they would lift their children and keep them on a limb. And then they would then, as they're on the limb, they would get underneath the tree, so push pause. So if you can imagine taking your child in current days, and the only thing I have in the back of my house would be a patio. That's kind of high up. But before you could put your child up on any type of limb to see if the, that you trust them, that means that child has to trust you. That means you have had to have a relationship with your father that you will still be encouraged enough that you would allow them to climb up in the tree with them for one, or have them put you on a perch someplace that you would just sit there quietly because you had to trust them. Well, in this story, they would take their youth, climb up into a tree, put them on a branch, then climb down and encourage the young child to say that daddy is big enough, daddy's strong enough, and daddy's going to catch you. So they would encourage the child, and after some encouragement, they say, the child would then push away, and of course, the dad would catch them. 
So can you imagine that you encouraging your child, current day over a patio, hey, jump down from the patio, I'm thinking of my children. I'm big enough, I'm strong enough, I'm gonna catch you. And of course, currently they would probably, after encouragement, they would probably would jump and you would catch your child. You encourage them. Well, that's like God in our finances. He says, I'll catch you, I have you, but before that, he has already, through some trials and tribulations, already proven to him, proven to you, that he can do this, that you can trust him with your finances, that you, he's gotten you through so many, some terrible times, and that you should, in this 2019, trust him with your finances. Give him what is due, his tithes and his offering. And it also said when they pushed away and they caught the child, of course the child's released, but that also reinforces that God is in control and that you can trust your finances with him. Amen? Hasn't he brought us through some tough times? And even encouragement in these times that we're going through? That God can, he's in control. And we have to trust him during these times more so than anything else. That he is in control. And if you give him a proper tithes and offering, that he will see you through. Because he says, prove me not, says the, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So as the offers prepared to come forth with the days, pick up the days, tithes, and offerings, let us understand with our financial situation that we're in, whatever situation that it is, that trusts upon the Lord and that he will see you through. Most kind Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you brought us through many trials and tribulations, but that you have proven to us that you are in control. Please bless this offering that's about to pick up. Bless those that are able to give and those that are not able to give, but more so, Lord, that this tithe and this offering will further and hasten your coming as we go through these end times. We ask this in the precious name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen.
Agro, we'll just stay right there, or stay there. I want that to continue to play. If ever there was a true phrase, it's that one. It's sweet to trust in Jesus. Just to take him at his word. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him. How I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, precious, oh, for grace to trust him more. It's trusting time to turn it all over to God and let him have his way. None of our schemes or plans will work without his blessing and without the miracle of his hand. And so I've asked the Lord to help me to learn how to trust him more every day. It's prayer time. Now I'm inviting you to come to the altar today as we trust him today with all our cares. Tis so sweet to trust just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the said the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him proved him more and more Jesus Jesus I invite you to stand where you are as we turn to the Lord in prayer. I want to thank God for Brother Cornell Jackson being here with us today. Good seeing you, brother. God is an awesome God. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we need you. We are able to call upon you because you are God. High and lifted up, yea, you look low. Father, your hand has been outstretched towards us. We are able to call upon you in the midst of our circumstances, no matter what they are. And you're always right there. Thank you for blessing, covering, holding, for bringing us into even this day. We don't take that for granted. The fact that we are here is because you are, and you are God. We thank you, Lord, for your loving care and your mercies. And even when we were contrary to your will, you still smiled upon us and still extended your hand of help and strength. Lord, we bless your name today. We give you the glory and the honor that only you deserve. We praise you with our loud hallelujah and declare what a mighty God we serve. Sitting upon your throne, you are full of majesty and wonder. 
And the light of your presence, Lord, chases all the dark despair away. But we come before you, O oh God, and we, we stand in need of cleansing one more time. We've heard a children's story today about forgiveness, Lord, how we should forgive one another. And we must. And then, Lord, we need forgiveness from you. That you will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That you will strip away the, the things, Lord, that so easily beset us. And cause us to be displeasing in your eyes. Lord, our heart is willing, but our flesh is weak. So, oh God, we, we bring our sin-stained souls to you. Not that we can simply cover them up, but we need them washed away. And then, Lord, we need you to purge us and then fill us with your power and your grace. Give us victorious lives over who and what we are. Lord, we're claiming that today. Can't do that on our own. We need you to do that for us, in us, and through us. And, Lord, we're careful to give you the praise. Thank you for Calvary and the blood that was shed there for our sins. Now, Lord, you're so powerful to cleanse us. We know you're able to save us and to help us in our need. So, Father, we come before you now and we lift up our hearts in petition. We simply plead, O oh God, that where we stand in need of miracles, that you will bless according to your love. Father, look upon these who have come before the altar today. You know their needs and their desires. Read each heart one by one, Lord, and bless as only you can. All across this room, we're standing, Lord. We're standing because we know that you are our God. And if the, you don't help us, there is no help. That if you don't fix it, it won't be fixed. If you don't save, we can't be saved. And Lord, if you don't heal, we won't be healed. And Lord, we just come before you now and just put everything before you. I ask, oh God, that you will look upon these United States. That somehow, Lord, in your way, your way, we, we can't figure this thing out. The devil has a toehold. But, Lord, we know you are greater than he is. Your power is omnipotent. And, Father, we want to pray right now for those families that are hurting. Those families, Lord, are wondering how they're going to uh, put their next meal together. Father, those families who have to look at their children and simply say, I'm sorry, but I don't know what to do. Father, I'm asking that you will touch, even use us, Lord, to be conduits of your help and grace and mercy to those who are standing in need right now. May we be your eyes and your hands and your help and your power and your touch to let men and women know in every situation where they are finding themselves struggling, that there is a God who loves us and cares for us. I pray, Lord, for the Senate. I pray for the Congress. I pray for our president. In the name of Jesus, Lord, show up. Manifest yourself one more time and let them know that you are God. Have your way in this thing. Lord, teach us what it is we need to learn. If it's learning how to lean on you more, Lord, we want to learn the lesson and begin to stand upon your promises. We're trusting you. Father, remember the sick in this place. We ask that you will be with each and every one of them. We ask that you will be with Brother Lyles Jr. in a very special way, continue to be with him in the hospital. And now, Lord, I, I lift up my voice in earnest special prayer for Pastor Claude Harris and his family. He's in the hospital right now, Lord, and he needs you. The family needs you. I really don't know what to ask for, Lord, but simply cry out, we need a miracle. 
And Lord, according to your love and mercy, we plead for that miracle. Without hesitation, we say, Lord, work a miracle. But most of all, remind us you're too holy, too loving to make a mistake. are sovereign you are king and it's sweet to trust in you so that's where we leave it Lord we leave everything right there we're trusting in you be with our church Globally, but most of all, Lord, right here in Southeast D.C., upon this hill on Massachusetts Avenue, we pray for DuPont Park. Be with our leadership, be with our members, bless our ministry, fill us with Holy Ghost power, and may we be reminded that we have a heaven to gain and a hell to shine. And when you see coming in the clouds of glory, we plead right now that we'll hear you say, well done, good and faithful servant. We ask in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, that all of God's people say together, amen, amen. Thus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and all. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust. asking that you will keep Pastor Harris in prayer and his family. Um, he was rushed to the hospital last night and it is very, very, very serious. But God is still on the throne. Please pray for him and his family. Come on, let's stand together. Breathe. 
sing that chorus again in the cross. Lord, I said he. that nothing in my hand I bring to the cross. I desperately cling. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For you are God, our strength, and our redeemer. Use your servant one more time, oh God, that's my plea. Touch the hearts of your people. And then save us. Save us. Save us in your kingdom. We plead in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. Let God's people say together, amen and amen. Would you turn with me today to the Old Testament, the book according to Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, and we want to read verses 11, 12, and 13. Isaiah 43, verses 11 through 13. Isaiah 43, verses 11 through 13. 13. If you have it, say amen. amen. Let us read together. I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed I, and not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses declares the Lord that I am God. Yes, and from ancient days I am he. No one can deliver out of my hand. When I act, who can reverse it? Today I simply want to speak with you for a few moments. I'm revitalized because God is real. Look at someone and simply tell them, I'm revitalized because God is real. See, that ought to just spark you up right there, right there, right there. Won't you be seated, please? I'm revitalized. I'm, I'm fixed. I'm picked up. I'm stirred up. I'm shaken up. I'm renewed because of one fact. And that fact is God is real. Uh, back in 2014, there was a movie that hit the theaters entitled Heaven is for Real. 
There's a story of four-year-old Colton Burpo's out-of-body experience as he uh, uh, shares that while they were uh, going through surgery on his body that he was able to see what was happening, made a visit to heaven while undergoing this process. Of course, it was met with skepticism. It even rubs up against our own doctrinal positions. But just, just, just the notion that the question is being answered as to whether or not heaven is a reality. It must have been of interest to people because the film received critical reviews. But even though the reviews were mixed this film grossed over $101 million worldwide. It took them $12 million to make it, and they grossed $101 million. That seems to be a profitable uh, a situation. It now speaks to the interest that there is at least some question under the sub psyche of humanity about this thing called heaven. Right away, if you're going to talk about heaven, you got to talk about God. You can't separate the two. So, right on the heels of this 2014 movie, Heaven is for Real, there was another movie that came out that simply said God's not dead now I can rejoice with that I can say amen I didn't need a movie to tell me that God's not dead just when I wake up in the morning and I'm still alive and I'm still moving and breathing that lets me know God's not dead dead when I go through my day and I'm blessed moment by moment I know there must be a God somewhere what was interesting for me is that if you're able to say God is not dead you first have to accept the reality that God is is he has to exist before you can declare him dead so this question about whether or not there is a god and whether or not there is a heaven is still running underneath the consciousness of humanity and creation and it is an appropriate question We've got a lot of questions that we're trying to find answers. I love that old Radio Shack commercial that would say, you got questions? We've got answers. They're out of business now. However, I'm so glad that the God we serve is still in business on the throne. We've got questions that we're seeking answers to. We're looking for understanding we want to know we need some clarity and there are some great questions in the world questions like what is reality what is truth questions like what is the meaning of life questions like do we have free will <clears throat> do we really have a choice or is everything already mapped out are we already predestined to our life's end what is consciousness what comes after you declare homo sapiens and what happens after you die but the greatest question the greatest question that has been asked and perhaps that is still being asked is does God exist is God real I believe that most of you <clears throat> have answered that completely for yourselves. Otherwise, the question has to be asked, what in the world are you doing in here this morning? If God is not real, if God does not exist, this makes no sense whatsoever. There is now and always has been a quest, <clears throat> a search, a diligent pursuit to establish and prove the existence or the reality of God. There is a continuum of beliefs from one end to the other, from those who say there 
is no God to the deistic disconnected God that says that God exists, he creates, then sets us in motion, and then leaves us <clears throat> on our own. But I'm glad that God spoke to Isaiah several years ago to help clear up the situation to answer the question and put this matter to bed once and for all. Isaiah records God's response and adds to the debate for now God chimes in, steps up and says, if you are not sure, if you are not clear, if it's hard for you to accept that there is a God, if you have a question or have no confidence in God, he says, let me help you by declaring from my own voice that I am who I am. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can we know them, because they are spiritually discerned. What Paul is trying to tell us, that if you have a heart and a mind of flesh, you will never get this God stuff straight in your mind. Maybe that's why we keep slipping back. Every time we find ourselves in difficulty, every time things get a little rough, every time the mountain gets a little hard to climb, every time the heat is turned up, we begin to forget that we did not get here on our own. You didn't make it to today by yourself. You got here to this moment in time because the answer to the question is God is real. So I stand with Isaiah. I have been, I can't speak for you, but I have been revitalized. I've got confidence that God is real. He declares a reality that of his existence for an exiled people in the book of Isaiah, but that same cry of hope and assurance is available for you and me. Verse 11 simply says, I, I myself am Yahweh and apart from me there is no savior here it is in a bag for you to take home with you this is your focus point God wants us to be revitalized with knowing beyond a shadow of a doubt at all times he is real it's critical it's important, it is appropriate that we start the new year, a brand new term on life as we embark upon this new journey that we stop, pause, recognize, encourage our minds, re-engage and lock in on the reality that God is real. Let me share this with you real quick. 4.5 billion people worldwide believe in a higher power or other gods. 4.5 billion believe that there is some extraordinary supernatural power that exists in the universe. One billion of them believe in the Abrahamic God of the Bible. That's a smaller number than the other three billion, but bless your soul, God's got at least one billion witnesses who will declare that he's still 
on the throne. God's real. He's real. He's real. In this pulpit, I stand up and declare it, and so can you. We know God is real because we made it. We know God is real because we crossed over. We know God is real because we are still here. Let me remind you that the devil tried to take you out last year, not just one time, two times, three times, but every day, y'all better get this, every day you walk, live, move, and breathe, the devil is trying to take you out. When you wake up in the morning, it's a miracle because while you were asleep, the devil was trying to choke you to death. When you walk through the day, the devil and his imps are around the corner. They're hiding in the bushes. They're in the car next to you. Have you not heard of the woman who pulled up to the stop, rolled down her window to give one of the people on the street some money and he shot her to death? Have you not heard about people who are just driving along, minding their business and a bullet finds their heart? We are here not because we're lucky, not because we're smart, not because we know what to do, not because we live in the right neighborhood. We are here because there's a God somewhere who's looking down upon your soul. He is because we came through, we overcame, and we can still hold on. God, did I say it once before? Let me say it again. God is real. The reality of God hangs in the air because we all know something exists that's greater than than humanity. Huh? Who, who, who's responsible? What's responsible? Surely it's not humanity. We can't even work through a government shutdown. Who is responsible for the universal order? I've never seen the universe shut down. Who's responsible for the marvelous constellations that hang in the heavens or the rhythm of nature? Yeah, we had a few 60 degree days during this time, but God's reminding us today that winter has come. Who's in control of our biological structure and our physiological systems? Who keeps our blood running warm through our veins and our neurological synapses firing like they ought to who keeps the brain going as it should and ought to who purifies the air and makes sure we have clean oxygen to breathe who takes a little eyeball and allows light to shine through uh, hit the back side of a, of a lens that sends images to the brain uh, who is the one who causes our skeletal system to be upheld by a muscular system, to be covered by skin. Who does all of that? I'm telling you, it ain't because of a test tube. It's not because of some scientific fanatics. It is because there is a creative God on the throne. Our social constructs even as messed up as they are, the only reason why there's any success at all in our government, in our community order, is because God is real. What we need is an aha moment, a time that, that it all clicks and makes sense. I don't know what was wrong with me. I could do anything with math. I love math, except when it came to fractions. Fractions messed me up. I, 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 I just, I, I just didn't get it. My father would sit there with me, my mother at, at homework. You know, parents still do that, you know. 
sit with the children at homework. And my father, grandparents, said, yeah, don't let me forget that. No, let me forget that. And would try to get me to understand what a fraction conceptually was. It just didn't make sense. I could add it, divide it, multiply it. So I could do, do all the formulas. But what it was, what it represented, didn't make sense. My father even got a pie. Cut it up. Said, you got a whole pie. That's a whole pie. Said, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Cut it up in four pieces. He said, each one of these pieces is one-fourth. Uh, I said, what? That just looked like a big piece of pie to me, the kind of size I usually don't get. He split the pie, the one-fourth in half. He said, now, now, now you've got eight pieces. This one slice represents one-eighth. The five. I said, what? 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 Well, if I cut it again, that one-eighth now is one-sixteenth. What? What? What are you talking about? My father just threw his hands up and walked away and left me with the pie. It wasn't until engineering was my goal. It wasn't until I took a drafting class. That triangular ruler, compasses, protractors, your triangles, slide rule, mathematical ruler. It wasn't until they gave me a die cast to now put in one quarter scale. I looked at it and I said, okay. Began to apply, look at it, conceptualize it. And while I'm drawing, this tool from full scale to one quarter scale, I looked up and said, aha, sometimes stuff happens in our lives. We don't understand. We don't get it. But when we come through, on the other side and your soul looks back and wonders, aha, it wasn't me, it wasn't you, there's a God somewhere. You might still not get it as to whether or not God is. So Psalm 19 and 1 gives us some help where there the Bible says because we don't get it, the heavens declare the glory of God and the sky above proclaims its handiwork. All you've got to do is stand out in a country sky, not a city sky, but go out in the country where it's dark as dark can be and a canopy of stars will open up before your very eyes and I guarantee you uh, if there's just a little bit of righteousness in you you will stand up and declare oh Lord my God when I and I also wonder consider all your hand has made there is a God there is something out there and I declare to you it's not the force there is something out there it is not the matrix there is something out there it is not the good of man there is something out there it's not arbitrary energy it's not fate it's not the yin or the yang there's a god who is in charge who sits high yet he works low to bring a out his marvelous wonders. So in the English Standard Version, Isaiah says again, you are my witnesses 
and my servant whom I've chosen that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he before me there was no God nor shall there be any after me you ask me to prove God I can't prove him you ask me to give you evidence I've got a boatload of that I declare to you it's an exercise of informed faith that I uh, declare and affirm that God is and that God is real makes no 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 question or no surprise that it takes faith to hang on to God Hebrews 11 and 6 says English standard version and without faith it is impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek after him. It is faith that causes me to call on God. It is faith that causes me to hold on to his unseen hand. It is faith that allows me to put my trust in him. And I believe and I've chosen to accept that God is real. For when I consider the other explanations, none of them make even half the sense of the, uh, the reality or the declaration that God is responsible, the creator and the sustainer of all that is. The best explanation I could come up with is that God is, is the answer to the mystery of the universe. God causes birds to fly and tigers to roam. God caused the whales to swim the ocean deep. God is the heat of the sun and the splendor of the moon. The best explanation I can come up with is God is the one who germinates the seed, causes it to break through the ground, and causes flowers to bloom and the leaves to form on the tree. It is God who's in control that in spite of our destructive nature, we haven't been blown off this planet. It's God who keeps us from annihilating each other. God is in the sunrise. God is there at the sunset. God causes the rain to fall and the snow to lightly lift. God is the melody of the song. God is the passion of a husband for his wife and the adoration of the wife for her husband. It ain't because y'all love each other so much that you get along. If your house is happy if your house is sane if there's joy in the house it's because God is in the marriage I declare to you God is in the development of a child he's the genius of humanity God is the best explanation I have for I should have been dead buried in my grave but because he is God he has kept me he has blessed me he has preserved me he has covered me and he spared my life God's the best explanation for the fact that I'm here that I breathe that I think that I create is God who causes me to sing God gives me my shout God is the joy of my praise God is the one who keeps me getting back up every time I'm not back down I get up because God is there I get up because God is there I live move and have my be because there is a God if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side I don't know where I would be and so the song the song is relevant he's real real 
Jesus is real to me. Oh, yes. He gives me the victory. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. Jesus is real to me. I declare it because I know it's true. And in fact, brothers and sisters, Jesus is real, real in spite of our setbacks. He's real in spite of our mess. He's real in spite of our troubles. Our situation does not determine God. God is bigger than all of your problems. I'm closing now. Isaiah 43, verse 11 through 13. E, the ESV says, I, I am the Lord. And besides me, there is no Savior. I declared and saved and proclaimed where there was no strange God among you. And you are my witnesses, declares the Lord. And I am God. Also henceforth, I am he. There is none who can deliver from my hand. When I work, can't nobody reverse it. Who can turn it back? So if God says yes, y'all don't believe that. If God says yes, nobody and nothing can say no. In the book Spiritual Gifts, third volume, page 96. The writer pins these words. Some of the descendants of Noah soon began to apostatize. Now, how could that be? They just came through a flood. Somebody had to tell them the story. Look, look, look. At one time, one but eight of us, God became so fed up with our sins that he flooded the world. One long before the descendants of Noah soon began to apostatize. A portion followed the example of Noah and obeyed God's commandments. Others were unbelieving and rebellious, and even these did not believe alike in regard to the flood. Some disbelieved in the existence of God and in their own minds accounted for the flood from natural causes. Others believe that God existed and that he destroyed the antediluvian race by a flood and their feelings like Cain rose in rebellion against God. In other words, they were mad that God had set a flood and that he destroyed the people from the earth and cursed the earth the third time by a flood. A revitalized Christian is convinced with the truth that God is real. And if you ever, ever doubt him, then I invite you to go to the cross. But there you will find God in his best splendor. For did not the writer say at the cross, at the cross, where I First, that's where my aha moment came, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now, right now, I am happy all the day. There's a children's book by the 
a title of Is a Blue Whale the Biggest Thing There Is? Written by author Robert Wells. The intent of the book was to take us from a place where we could grasp the size of a thing to a place where we couldn't measure. So the question or the declaration or the question was, is the blue whale the biggest thing there is in the world? You will come to find out that a blue whale is the largest animal on the planet. In fact, the flippers on this tail are bigger than most of the largest animals we have on earth. They roam the deep. They are massive. But when you really look at the whole scheme of things, the blue whale is nowhere near as big as a mountain. Because if you took a blue whale, put him in a jar, if you were able to take a hundred blue whales and put them in a jar and take them to Mount Everest, hollow out Mount Everest, it would take at least a million jars of 100 blue whales to fill up the mountain. And even as massive as Mount Everest is, it's no match for the earth. Mount Everest is an awesome structure, geological structure of this planet. But if you put 100 Mount Everest on top of each other, they would only be a whisker on the planet we call the blue ball. And so with the massiveness of the earth, I still have to tell you that the earth isn't anywhere as big as our sun. For we're told by scientists you could fit one million earths inside of our sun. But our sun, our sun, is called a medium-sized star. Meaning that there's something else out there. In fact, our medium sized star is nowhere near as large as what they call the red super giant star, star called Antares. It would take 50 million suns of our suns to fit inside of Antares. And even as large as, as, as Antares is, is it, it isn't anywhere near as large as the Milky Way, the galaxy that we live in. For there are more than a billion stars and supergiants like Antares in the Milky well, Way as, 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 and as well as countless comets and asteroids that make up our galaxy. And even as large as the Milky Way is, it's nowhere near as large as the universe. For there are at least a billion other galaxies in the universe. And yet filled with billions of galaxies, Scientists tell us that the universe is almost empty. That the distance between galaxy and galaxy is beyond our imagination. We talk about light years. Light years won't get it. But these galaxies are so far apart, they have befuddled our systems of measuring. And when you consider all of that, there's still one more consideration. 
Because there's a God who holds that universe in the hollow of his hand. He's the one who spoke and it was done. Commanded and it stood fast. He's the one with his almighty power who not only created but he orders and sustained it all. He's in all places at all times at the same time. We serve a mighty God who is real and larger than large and greatly to be praised. And go back to that cross. Because if you think your sins are so heavy, so large, that you cannot be saved, let me remind you that on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross. And on that cross, hung the one, that one cross, not 10,000 crosses, that one cross was able to cleanse all sin. All sin. Past, present, and future. Once he died and his grace is big enough to handle the sins of all time. So you got problems? You've got questions? I just want to remind you today that you've got a bigger God. who's got it all under control. You may not see it. You may not understand it. You may not be able to figure it out. I don't have to figure it out. I know he's got it worked out. And all I've asked is for him to help me to be revitalized in my trust in him. He's real. He's real. The question is, is he real to you? Your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed. That's the question that needs to be, must be. Till my throne at last I lay down. Desperately. Before we close, perhaps you just want special prayer as we enter in this new year. We're in our second week. Stuff is already stirred up. Things are already breaking free, breaking loose. Problems may still be mounting up, but I believe somebody's already experienced victory thus far this year. But you just want special prayer as you begin this journey, continue on. I invite you to come as we begin to pray now. Just come, come, come. Receive special prayer today. Whatever the desire of your heart is, God is here to receive it. I haven't heard that hymn in a while. I... Mm -hmm.
each change it someday for a crown. Would you say it one more time for me? Sing that chorus for me. So I'll sing it like you really mean it. The old rugged wrong Oh, oh to my trouble At last I lay down My love, I will come Oh God, we've come today. We recognize, we acknowledge you are real. You're from everlasting to everlasting. There never was a time when you were not. You are beyond time. In fact, you created time. Time is dependent upon you. And so Lord, we just, we just lift up our voices in praise knowing that you are and that you hold us in the hollow of your hands. I don't think we really get it, Lord. We haven't had that aha moment yet. That a God who holds the universe is concerned about me. Thank you for your mercy and your love. Help that reality to sink deep in our souls so that we will come to realize, Lord, no matter what comes against us, there is more with us and for us than anything that could ever come against us if it all came at the same time. What a mighty God we serve. Lord, may we know that. Know that. Not kind of say, yeah, yeah, know that. Beyond a shadow of a doubt in our hearts, day in and day out. Oh, may we never, ever, 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 ever leave your side. Teach us to stay close to you. The invitation was given, Lord, for someone to give their life to Jesus Christ. If that someone is here today, Lord, I pray that before they leave this place, they will make their calling and election sure. Now upon these who have come to the altar, you know why they're here. Breathe on them right now. In the name of Jesus. Let your mighty power and spirit fall upon them right now. And for all of us who have stood, Lord, acknowledging that you are our God. And we're so grateful for that cross that can handle all of our sins. Will you just bless? We don't know what tomorrow holds. But we are convinced of who holds tomorrow. Our loving God. So we turn it all over to you. We trust you. We're walking by faith in you. And right now we're going to say thank you. Thank you for overcoming. Thank you for the financial breakthroughs. Thank you for the healing. Thank you for the peace in our homes. Lord, thank you for knocking down our enemies. Thank you, Lord, for being with us in every situation in our lives. We say thank you and hallelujah because we know it's already done. It's done. May we live in that assurance each and every day of our lives. 
just as sure as we are that you're coming again. Receive us, oh God. We claim that promise too. Receive us in your kingdom. Well, we ask it in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. And all of God's children who know he's real, say amen, amen, and amen. Father God, that when we leave this church this week, that you make yourself real to us, each and every one of us. Our prayer this afternoon, Father God, that as we leave, that we leave the church but never leave your presence. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be dismissed. <laughs>